Let me bring in our next guest, who is bullish on financials these days. He is Charlie Babrinskoy at Ariel Investments. He's the vice uh, chairman and the director of research there, and uh, he oversees uh, over six billion dollars in assets. And Charlie, uh, of course, Dominic with me as well. And Charlie, you know, listening to what uh, Pandit is saying and how the bank is going to get back to basics and bring clients overseas, uh, and talking about City Holdings eventually getting down to 10 percent of assets. What do you make of that? A couple of things. First, the reason I'm so bullish is because others are so bearish. The fear and the negativity around financials is greater than I've ever seen. Uh, the valuations are also lower than I've ever seen, with names like Citi, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman trading at big discounts to their tangible book value. So those are all the positives. The one cautionary point I would make is, although Citi Holdings is only 10 percent of assets, Remember that total equity is only about 10% of assets. So city holdings is now about equal to all of the equity value in city. Uh, so if there are still significant losses at city holdings, that's going to have an impact on book. Well, well, Charlie, let's talk about those valuations that you were just referencing here. City says it's getting smaller, getting back to its core business. But the valuations that people attach to these stocks back in the day when they were still big, risk-taking banks is a lot greater than, than what they are now. Is there a justification for paying a lesser multiple because these banks are smaller and do take less risk? Well, that would imply, I would say, that they're more conservative and because they have less risk that they should uh, not trade at such a big discount to their intrinsic value. Look, these businesses are, gonna not, are not going to earn the 25% ROEs that some of the big investment banks did in the past. That's clearly true. And as a result, they shouldn't trade at two and a half or three times tangible book. Mm -hmm. But these valuations well south of tangible book imply they're not even going to be able to earn seven, eight, nine percent return on equity. And I just think that's too pessimistic. So have you been adding on to your financial holdings? I know Citigroup is one of your stocks, right? Yeah, we, we've, we've had a, a hold on Citi. We have held it um, because of, frankly, still some of the uncertainty. But the core, value, the core business of Citi, of providing advice to corporations around the world, is still very good. Citi really is the leading international global corporate bank. So that's what we like about it. Uh, names like Morgan Stanley, however, got even cheaper relative to their intrinsic book, to their uh, tangible book. And so we were adding to both uh, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley because they just got, in our opinion, unjustifiably cheap. Well, I mean, Charlie, as you look at the weightings that you have here for the financials, for the bank stocks, many analysts still have them as an underweight. Is, it, is, it a, right. is there a case to be made that you, you're saying that they should be equal weight to the rest of the marketplace or that they should be kind of maybe even overweight at these valuation levels? Yeah, I mean, you just made the key point. So many analysts are so negative on these names. That's frankly one of the main reasons that we're positive. We just think people are excessively pessimistic. Um, so we don't tend to try to put bench our weights together relative to benchmarks. We don't say, oh, we have to be at 20 percent financials because the benchmark's 20 percent. That's right. a bad way to invest. But uh, we do think that uh, a number of these names have a real opportunity to do extremely well. We've said Morgan Stanley is going to potentially double from here. Charlie. It's either going to be in single digits or double from here. Uh, Charlie, just quickly, um, when you heard about the MF Global Bankruptcy and read about that, what kind of due diligence did you do on your financial holdings, though? Well, you obviously want to be able to see what the assets are in the financial firms that you have. And that's always one of the negatives on financials. It's hard to see what they own. But I do want to emphasize, the system needs to have people like MFF, MF Global be able to go under. That's how the system mm. works. You okay. want people to be able to fail. You don't want to prop up every financial services firm. Well, I mean, it would say, like, there you go. You know, it, it was one firm that wasn't too big to fail, and it failed. Charlie Bimbrinskoy, thank you so much.